So here's the side view, sort of the, uh, the generator control panel. I really like having the controls on the side and it's on the opposite side from the exhaust. So you're not really uh, dealing with the exhaust of the motor when you're dealing, uh, dealing with the uh, generator. And it just, uh, it's very easy to start. I'm not gonna start it inside, but I'll take it outside and start it. Uh, it has an hour meter, which is nice. You can keep up with how many hours you've run it, the breaker. And I just use one, uh, one connector here and plug it into my house and feed uh, a distribution panel. There's the battery. Um, when you get it, it, uh, it comes disconnected and that's uh, to be expected. Uh, I guess I don't want this thing firing up by accident. And here you can see, uh, I've added this hose here. This is a, a quick disconnect for the gas line. And uh, this is what I use to connect to my, to my gas line on my house. And I just keep it on this as a, a holder. It keeps it clean. Otherwise, you know, you might get some debris inside here. And so I keep it, uh, keep it on a holder. And this is the uh, this is the piece I've added. This is custom. There's some strain release here for the hose. The hose is pretty big and flexible. This is the gas shutoff, and this is the adjuster that you will adjust it to uh, for the, the smoothest running. And this is the regulator. It uh, it's mounted on a rubber isolator. And this is an aluminum bracket I made to just to mount it kind of down and out of the way. And it's pretty nice the way it. Uh, it has a gasket that goes right into the uh, carburetor. I'll show you a little more detail about that, but it's pretty ingenious what they did. And I was a little skeptical, but it's, after two years, I'm a believer now. And I've got a connector here that plugs into the, uh, I'll show you. There's a connector right here. It plugs into the battery and it's a quick disconnect uh, for the float. And this is the air filter. It's got a generous uh, large filter there. And uh, pull crank. I, I've never actually, well, I did pull it once to see if I could do it and I can, but uh, no need to do it if, uh, if the, the motor's always running good. This is the fuel shutoff. And it also has a pretty nice fuel A gauge there and this is where you fill it it's got a chain to retain it and you can see down in there's a screen it's a well thought out generator and uh, you know I wasn't I wasn't sure when I bought it if I was gonna really like it but I really really like it it's kind of it's quieter than the other one even though it's larger and it has a nice rubber isolation and uh, I think it's just a well thought out machine. It's got, it's even got some emissions uh, equipment on it. But that seems to be working fine. It's got this, uh, this handle here that you can, you can hear the suction cups when I pick it up. But this, these are the custom pieces here. You can see it's kind of, it's got a rubber isolator there. But I figured uh, this is the best place to mount this kit sort of out of the way and this is a long enough hose to reach to my uh, to my gas connection outside here's the manual that came with the Westinghouse generator it, uh, it has a maintenance schedule and the uh, specifications is pretty handy to have your spark plugs and uh, air filters and things like that you need to have oil weight and type Highly recommend you follow along to keep up with the maintenance schedule if you want to have a reliable generator because you never know when you're going to need it. This is the, the booklet that comes with the conversion kit to run on tri-fuel. It's from U.S. Carburation. And they have a website, www.motorsmorkle.com. They have videos on there uh, to show you how to do the uh, conversion, which is handy. You know, you can get, kind of see what you're getting yourself into. But for me, uh, actually having this kit in front of me was a little more helpful because uh, I don't have a computer out, out there in the shop when I'm working. But uh, this kit's basically like the other kit I put in 20 years ago. The same kind of regulator looks the same and the same throttle uh, adjuster here and assortment of hoses, zip ties, and bolts and things like that. 
The unique part here, there was this uh, gasket with the built-in injection port here called the motor snorkel. I'll show you a little close-up view of it here. The gasket itself will vary depending on which model you're, you're purchasing for which engine. And so it's important to get the correct one so the, uh, the gasket fits appropriately. But it's pretty ingenious that the gasket has an injection port molded right into the side of it. And so you just simply take out the carburetor, put this piece of sandwiches in there, and bolt it all back together, and then hook this hose up to the output here. And uh, it works great. You, then the only thing you have to do is uh, adjust this for a smooth running motor on whatever you're, if you're running on natural gas or propane. And this thing has been working two years for me and I haven't had any issues with it. And just like my other uh, conversion kit, I ran that for about 20 years and never had a single issue with that. So I'm looking forward to uh, continued operation with this one. So please click the like and subscribe if you want to follow along and... Uh, Check out some of my other videos of other things I'm doing that you might find interesting. Thanks for watching. Hey, you know, in my area of the country, we have come to rely on having a backup power generator because we often lose power when the when, even just when the wind blows. And if you're working from home, you really need to have, you know, reliable power. And especially if you have a hurricane, you know, you might be out of power for a couple of weeks. And so for the past 20 years, I've relied on a uh, Craftsman generator, a small one, I think it's about 4,500 watts. And I converted it over to run on uh, natural gas and propane as well as gasoline. And back then I used the something from Century Fuel Products and that worked out fine. And uh, But this time around, uh, my generator was getting old, you know, 20 years, I, I take very good care of it. But after 20 years, I decided, well, I should get a different one, a newer one. And so I bought a Westinghouse a WGEN 6000. It's a little larger and it's electric start. And I've been running it about two years now. I kept the old one just in case I wasn't sure about this new one, you know. So I uh, hung on to both of them for a while. And then after a couple of years, I was like, well, okay, this thing is good. So I, I sold my other one to someone else. And so I have this, uh, I converted the new one over to, uh, to also natural gas and propane. And it has a kit by uh, U.S. Carburation. And it's a little different kit, but the parts are very similar and very easy to do. To convert it over and it, it, it really I think it's a lot better uh, for the engine to, than running on gasoline because you always have to worry about using non-ethanol gasoline that it, and it might be going bad so you have to always be mindful to rotate the gasoline out put a fuel preservative in it there's a lot of maintenance and upkeep to the uh, generator you know to make sure it's going to be reliable and I also keep my uh, generator on a float charger so it's you know a battery tender so it's always ready to fire up and it always starts as soon as you hit the button